We'll come back to the uh, equine anatomy notes. Uh, continuing on the anatomy of the equine female reproductive system, uh, today I will be talking about the different structures, the different parts of the, of the female uh, uh, reproductive system, and we'll be talking about the clinical relevance of, for each of these um, parts. Now, before we've talked about the pelvic cavity and the borders for the pelvic cavity and the clinical significance for studying the uh, female uh, genital system. So, we finished the significance last time and we finished the structures of the pelvic cavity and we mentioned that the Rectum is located dorsally. Ventral to that is the reproductive tract. Ventral to that is the bladder. All of these are located retroperitoneally, meaning that they are not included in the peritoneal cavity. They are not covered with the peritoneum. And we mentioned a number of procedures that actually can can work to uh, our advantage in that in that uh, situation, uh, mainly the uh, transvaginal colpotomy. Now, I would like to mention that with regards to the bladder, the bladder is also located in the pelvic cavity. However, in the newborn, the bladder is located in the abdominal cavity. And sometimes the erecus, which basically developmentally come with the umbilicus, the hepatic vessels, sometimes the erecus does not close when the fall is born. The bladder remains in the abdominal cavity for a while and then the erecus is basically remain open. So you will see urine coming out of the umbilical opening. This case is called patent ductus urecus or patent urecus and this can be fixed surgically. We'll talk about that later but I thought I'll mention that since the bladder did not have enough chance last lecture to be mentioned. Now, in this lecture, we'll talk about the individual structures that form the reproductive system in the female, and I will talk about each one of them, and then we'll talk about the clinical significance for each of them. Okay, we have the ovaries, we have the oviduct, So we have the ovaries, we have the oviduct, we then have the uterus, uterine horns, and the body, and then we will have the cervix, the vagina, the vestibule, and then the vulva. Again, we have the ovaries, the oviduct, uterine horns, uterus, cervix, the vagina, the vestibule, and the vulva.
please pay attention to the junction between the vestibule, this is the vestibule, and this is the vagina. The junction between the vestibule and the vagina contains two important things that I would like for you to remember. One is the opening for the urethra, and that makes bladder catheterization very easy in mares, number one. And number two is this transverse fold, transverse fold, or the remnants of the hymen. Transverse fold or the remnant of the hymen. Now, this structure we will utilize later on to treat a case that sometimes happen. We call that case urine pooling. Sometimes urine backflows in the, from the vestibule to the vagina to the cervix and gets into the uterus. We want to prevent that, so we went, we, we stretch a little the transverse fold and we suture it to the floor of the vestibule. So the direction of the urine will go in the back direction toward the vulva. We'll talk about that later on. So now we will start talking about the very first thing and that is the ovaries. The ovaries of the mare are kidney bean shape. They are both located on both sides of the dorsal abdomen, ventral to the fourth or fifth lumbar vertebra caudal to the kidneys and cranial ventral to the wings of the ilium the iliac wings and they are suspended with the meso ovarium we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how this works now They have a medulla and a cortex. The medulla is toward the outside and the cortex is toward the inside. And there is an ovulation fossa. Now, in mares, the corpus luteum is not palpable. You cannot palpate it. That's where ultrasound comes pretty handy. So the ovary is kidney bean shape that has a medulla and a cortex. and an ovulation fossa. The length of the ovary is about 10 centimeters and the height of it is 4 centimeters. The length of the ovary is 10 centimeters and the height is 4 centimeters. The ovary is only dorsally attached, so it's free ventrally, only dorsally attached with the mesovarium. Ventrally, the ovaries 
are free. It's located, as I mentioned earlier, ventral to the fourth or fifth lumbar vertebra, caudal to the kidneys, and only attached dorsally by the mesovarium. Only dorsally. The ovaries are free ventrally. Let's take a look at how they are located. These are the ovaries. One, two, number eight, and number fifteen. And they are free ventrally. And they are suspended with the mesovarium dorsally. Very important. The length is about 10 centimeters, depending, of course, on the, on the size of the mare and also on the breed. Some breeds are larger than others, and some mares are larger than others. The height is about 4 centimeters. This is a kidney bean shape structure. Of course, it has a medulla and a cortex, and it has an ovulation fossa. Best palpated with rectally, and then for pregnancy diagnosis to see the corpus luteum, ultrasound is the method of choice for this. You can see how the probe is touching or the ovary, and you can see here the different ovum and all those sizes. Sometimes the ovaries encounter a number of tumors, one of which is called granulosa cell tumor. Granulosa cell tumor Granulosa cell tumor creates a male like behavior in the mares. A male like behavior in the mares. This tumor requires ovariectomy. This tumor requires ovariectomy. And removing the ovaries it depend, depends on the size. Now let's take a look first at, at the at the tumor itself. This is a cross section of the ovary. This is an ultrasound image. Both of these are ultrasound images. You can see a cross section. The ovary is full of fluids, edema, and this is another picture. This is the medulla, this is the cortex, this is the ovulation fossa, and you can see all these nodules. Basically, this requires removal of the ovaries, and we do that best by an abdominal approach. As I mentioned in the abdominal uh, cavity lecture, we will do a flank incision. A flank incision, and we need to make sure to suture the abdominal tunic, which is the deep fascia, which covers the external abdominal oblique. It's very strong and needs to be uh, uh, sutured. So we open up 
the the uh, the animal abdominal wall you can see here this is basically um, a slide showing removal of the ovary through the flank incision of the animal and of course after that the animal is is um, uh, the abdominal wall is sutured and everything abdominal tunic is taken care of and uh, and the healing process takes uh, takes a, a, about about a month to three months uh, for full recovery um, that's 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 uh, basically the extent of the ovaries discussion now uh, we'll we'll go to uh, to talk about the oviduct the oviduct is about 20 to 30 centimeter in length and it has three parts the infundibulum ampulla and isthmus and the function of the oviduct is to transfer to transport the oocytes and uh, it's the site of fertilization uh, all of this can be covered or will be covered in physiology so that's why i'm not i'm not too uh, detailed on it basically and then during uh, estrus the the isthmus uh, contracts to propel the the, the sperms uh, basically uh, to 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 get them toward the uh, to fertilize the the uh, the egg of choice if you will and uh, there are there are uh, papillae uh, that that helps in the sperm selection the the choice for the sperm um, that is strong that is able to fertilize the the um, the um, the uh, oocyte um, again this will be covered in physiology so uh, um, that that's why we're not too detailed on on, on these structures here um, this is this is a, a picture that shows uh, all these structures uh, first you have the um, infundibulum and this is the infundibulum this is the ampulla and this is the isthmus and basically the infundibulum uh, captures the oocyte uh, in the ampulla there will be the uh, uh, site of fertilization here and then in the in the isthmus you have you have papillae to to basically uh, um, make choice for the best sperm that will reach the oocyte to to uh, to fertilize it so that's that's basically the uh, the function of this of this uh, uh, oviduct. Uh, now we'll go to the uterus. The uterus, uh, two horns and a body, uh, suspended in the pelvic cavity by the broad ligament dorsally, and has three layers: serosa, myometrium, and endometrium. The blood supply is uterine artery, uterine branch of the vaginal artery, and uterine branch. Of the ovarian artery. Uh, the reason why we have to be concerned about the uterine uh, blood supply is because um, when we have dystocia or difficulty in parturition or uh, when we have uh, uterine prolapse or ruptures uh, we have to be very careful about these these blood vessels because they are they are huge and they can cause death uh, sometimes. Um, now uh, with, with regards to the to the placenta, it's a diffuse and chorioallantoic. I'm, I'm sure histology will cover will cover these uh, yeah, uh, the, these types. So let's take a look at the uterus and uh, uh, how does it look like. This is the uterus, and uh, you can see these are the ovaries here. But this is the uterine horn. And this is the uterine body, uh, basically. 
again it's suspended uh, dorsally with the with the uh, 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 broad ligament. Um, now, these are the types of uh, blood vessels that I was talking about. If there is any any um, forceful uh, delivery, or the size of the of the fetus is pretty large compared to the to the uh, birth canal, uh, these these arteries can be can be ruptured and that's very important we have to be very careful about about uh, handling these cases this is the arterial blood supply pretty pretty heavy basically vaginal artery uh, uterine branch of the ovarian artery and uterine uh, branch of the um, uh, vaginal artery uh, so and the uterine artery itself uh, very very uh, intense uh, blood supply um, this is a case where I was talking about the blood supply of the of the uterus cases of perennial laceration and um, again because of the size of the um, of the uh, uh, fetus uh, sometimes or the fall in this case because it's ready to go uh, sometimes it ruptures the whole perineal area and and that's 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 pretty serious because sometimes the um, the uh, uterine artery will be will be injured in this case this is another case of a rectovaginal fistula that i showed you before again this case is not too bad because of the um, uh, because the, the the arteries were not were not injured but but we have to be very careful uh, uh, you know when, when we see these cases, the main thing is basically to check for these three arteries. Uh, pregnancy diagnosis, of course, ultrasound is the method of choice that, that we utilize to, uh, to see if there's a fetus uh, in the uterus. And, and again, this is the way we, we, we put the probe. Uh, now, sometimes you will have, you will have clinical cases in the um, in the uterus, as sometimes uh, cases like pyometra or accumulation of pus, accumulation of pus in the in the uterus, which of course it's it's a major surgery and it requires removal of the ovaries, hysterectomy uh, in 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 mares, and that's that's done uh, through, of course, a ventral midline ciliotomy. Uh, through the linea alba, you can see here the suture, the suture, the the uh, the, the uterus, and the, the 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 layers of the abdominal wall, or we can see them here, and then they're suturing suturing the uh, the uh, uterine body, basically. This is the end of the, which which basically they took all the uterus, all the pus inside it. Uh, so they'll make make sure that this is this is you know it's gone, uh, and, and and this is a closure of the of the abdominal uh, wall. Um, now another case is as I mentioned earlier the uterine uh, prolapse. Uh, this is a case of uterine prolapse, and uh, and this is a uh, and another one is here too. This is another case of uterine prolapse. Uh, both of these, you know, when 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 uh, when when you are faced by by clinical cases like this, the most important thing is to two things. Uh, one is to make sure that the uterine artery, the uterine branch of the vaginal artery, and the uterine branch of the uh, ovarian artery are 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 okay and intact, and there's no bleeders. And then uh, to avoid at every cost the the um, um, uh, infection, uh, necritis basically is is pretty serious and, and devastating in this case. Another thing, uh, another thing that we see sometimes is, is cysts. And and here this is a this is an, an endoscopic image of the uterus. There's there are cysts in, in them sometimes that. That basically make it difficult for the um, for for uh, uh, pregnancy to, to to take place. Uh, 
so also this is, must be removed from the from the euros uh, uh, again I'm, I'm going through these cases pretty quickly because because you will you will see these cases in details and when when you go to or to uh, theory genealogy um, now with regards to the anatomy um, there there isn't much to say here uh, this is another another uh, application that, that we utilize the uterus for antibiotic administration and AI of course uh, all of this is done through the, the uterus same thing here you can see that they are they're they're putting a system in the uterus for to deliver either lavage or to deliver antibiotics and things like that this is the system where you insert it through the through the vagina to the to the uh, 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 cervix all the way to the uterine body here and then you you start injecting uh, antibiotics or collecting and then putting putting fluids from from another another uh, source basically so so basically the uterus is is a very important structure that needs to be uh, uh, handled with care and 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 studied pretty carefully uh, the cervix uh, the cervix is is pretty it is is a pretty thick uh, and palpable uh, structure so we can palpate this rectally and uh, it's it's like very muscular um, now one of the most important things about the cervix is it creates what we call the mucus plug a barrier a mucus barrier to prevent anything from getting inside the uterus from the outside so this is this is where the mucus plug is is formed let's talk about that even more so the cervix is about five to seven centimeter long and two to five centimeter wide thick palpable muscle so rectally you can feel it you can you can palpate it and it contracts and it expands it contracts and it expands it's very important uh, of course it when 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 there is contraction that means the uterus is not ready to receive any thing from the outside world expansion is basically when the mare is in heat in estrus so basically the expansion will accommodate the uh, male reproductive organ for du or dur during the the mating so so that's that's the importance of of the structure again as i mentioned earlier um, it forms during pregnancy what we call a mucus plug during pregnancy so 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 if the uterus is or it has a a fertilized ovum in it a fetus that means this plug will start to be forming to prevent anything from coming inside that's basically the extent of the of the cervix um uh, for 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 the purpose of this discussion now the vagina the vagina uh, is is about 15 20 centimeters uh, long and only the cranial portion is located in the peritoneal cavity the posterior portion is not located in the peritoneal cavity so it's retro peritoneal retro peritoneal and that is the area where you need to open dorsally to do the uh, uh, transvaginal approach uh, colbotomy or 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 removal of the of the ovaries uh,
so 15 to 20 centimeters long. The anterior portion is in the peritoneal cavity. The posterior is retroperitoneal. And there is no glandular structures uh, in, in, the, in the vagina. The thing about it is that it, it collapses when there is no breeding. It collapses. When there is breeding and parturition, it expands. That's the, that's the, uh, the, the, um, the extent of, of our talk, uh, about the vagina. Now, next time, I will start talking about a case that take place in the vagina, and that is urine pooling, urine pooling, or urovagina. This is an, a, an endoscopic view. This is the cervix, and all of this is basically urine in the, in the vagina. So you will see how we will prevent this case surgically and how can we treat urovagina by closing first the cervix and then trying to guide the urine to go in the caudal direction rather than the cranial direction. Rather than going toward the uterus, it's, we want it to go through the tail or in the direction of the tail. We will talk that about that next time.